Hi everyone, welcome back to ChemTalk. In this video, we will begin to cover the basics of organic nomenclature, starting with the origins of the practice, an intro to the most basic functional group, alkanes, followed by another functional group derived from them, and a few examples for practice. Organic nomenclature, or the naming of organic molecules, is vital in distinguishing unique molecules from one another and determining constitutional isomers. A molecular formula is simply not enough to describe a compound, so that's why in 1892, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, also known as IEPAC, created the most widely used naming system in chemistry called substitutive nomenclature, or commonly called IUPAC nomenclature. Learning IUPAC nomenclature and all of the rules within it can seem daunting at first, but we will try to unpack them in a way that makes it easier to comprehend. Substitutive or IUPAC nomenclature stems from the naming of alkanes, which are compounds that contain only carbon atoms single bonded to hydrogen atoms. Understanding the ins and outs of alkane nomenclature first will help make other naming processes seem much simpler. Again, this may seem like a different language, but with time, nomenclature will become second nature. Firstly, you should determine if you are asked to name an unbranched or branched alkane when given an alkane nomenclature problem. An unbranched alkane is the simplest to name. Just count the number of carbons within the chain and add the suffix ane. The number of carbons in the unbranched alkane will correspond with a certain root, as shown in the sequence below. A one carbon alkane is called methane, two carbons is ethane, three carbons is propane, four is butane, and the rest are displayed in the table. The basis of all organic chemistry nomenclature comes from these names. For branched alkanes, a branched alkane, like the one I have on the right, contains branch-like substituents, groups that are bonded to a longer principal or parent chain. Alkyl groups are a type of substituent. They are essentially an alkane with one hydrogen removed and are named with the same prefixes as their alkane counterparts, just with an added YL suffix. A methyl group has one carbon and three hydrogens. An ethyl group has two carbons and five hydrogens, and so forth. Other common alkyl groups you should be able to recognize are, which I have highlighted in red, an isopropyl group, a secondary butyl or sec butyl group, an isobutyl group, and a tertiary or tert butyl group. This is not an exhaustive list, of course, but these groups are frequently seen in future organic chemistry topics, so it's important to be able to identify them. Back to branched alkanes. In order to name a branched alkane, you should first determine what the principal chain is. A principal chain is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms in the alkane. They are named by the number of carbons that are within them in the same sequence as was shown for unbranched alkanes, such as methane, ethane, propane, etc. Next, you should number the carbons in the principal chain. The direction in which you number the chain is very important though. You have to number the principal chain in a way that results in the alkyl groups or branches being bound to the carbons with the smallest possible numbers. The position of the alkyl groups or the locant on the principal chain is denoted by numerical prefixes. Positions of 2, 3, and 4 would take priority over positions of 4, 5, and 6, for instance. The more substituents on the principal chain, the better. If you can distinguish two options that yield parent chains with the same number of carbons, then the parent chain with the most substituents takes priority. Also, if you can distinguish two parent chains with the same number of carbons and the same number of substituents, you should choose the parent chain, which gives the substituents the lowest possible positions. Next, if two methyl groups or two alkyl groups are on the parent chain, this is denoted by the prefix di in front of the alkyl name, which will be in front of the parent chain name. Three methyl groups would be trimethyl, four would be tetramethyl and so forth. One methyl substituent is written as methyl. A prefix is not necessary in this case. The locants of multiple identical groups are also listed with commas separating the numbers. Alphabetical order is vital. However, you should ignore the prefix in front of the substituent name. 
For instance, if you have a terp-butyl group, use butyl to alphabetize. Substituents should be listed in alphabetical order. Bringing all of that together, you can now name a branched alkane. Let's try to name this branched alkane. For this example or any future ones in this video, feel free to work alongside of me or pause the video to try it out on your own. Step one, let's find the principal or parent chain and determine the substituents. The longest continuous chain of carbon atoms in this molecule is seven, meaning the root name would be heptane. The substituents that can be seen here are a terp butyl and two methyl groups. Step two, number the principal chain in a way that the substituents have the smallest number or locant. We can number this molecule either left to right or right to left. Numbering the heptane molecule left to right will result in the terp butyl group having a position of four, the first methyl group a position of five, and the second methyl group a position of six. Numbering the molecule from right to left will mean the first methyl group has a position of two, the second a position of three, and the terp butyl group is still at four. Because positions two and three are lower than positions five and six, the right to left numbering system will be favored. Finally, you should make sure that terp butyl is listed first because of alphabetization. B comes before M. Altogether, the full name for this molecule would be 4 terp butyl 2 3 dimethyl heptane. Moving on, we can now unpack the naming for another alkane-derived organic molecule with what we've reviewed for alkane nomenclature. Substituted cycloalkanes. There are two routes to naming cycloalkanes. To determine if you're dealing with an alkane, though, you should look for a continuous acyclic alkyl chain as well as a ring. To identify what the parent or the base of the name is, ask yourself two questions about the number of carbons within each part of the molecule. One, is the ring size larger than the continuous alkyl chain? If so, then the ring is the parent or base of the name, and the alkyl chain will be counted as a substituent to the ring and named accordingly. This is called an alkyl-substituted cycloalkane. Two, is this continuous alkyl chain larger than the ring? If so, then treat this like a branched alkane problem, where the substituent to the parent alkane is a ring, otherwise known as a cycloalkyl substituent, and name it accordingly. This is a cycloalkyl substituted alkane. Cycloalkane names are given based on the number of carbons in the ring. You just add the prefix cyclo to the corresponding acyclic alkane name. A three carbon ring would be called cyclopropane, a four carbon ring would be called cyclobutane, five cyclopentane, six cyclohexane, etc. Cycloalkyl substituents are named the same way that alkyl substituents are. Take the analogous cycloalkane and drop the A in suffix, adding a YL. Again, it's important to number the parent ring or the alkane accordingly so that the substituents have the smallest locants possible. For an alkyl substituted ring, you must give the position of each substituent if there is more than one. However, if only one is present, it is unnecessary to give a locant because the position is ambiguous. In the first example on the left, the ring is larger than both acyclic alkyl chains. There are six carbons in the ring and two carbons in this ethyl group, one in the methyl group. Therefore, the ring is the parent. A six carbon ring corresponds with the name cyclohexane, so this will be the base of the molecule's name. Now, Numbering the ring to give locants the substituents yields two options. You could either number the ring clockwise starting at the ethyl group or number the ring going counterclockwise starting at the methyl group. Because of alphabetization, ethyl will receive the lower number rather than the methyl because in each case, both numbering systems will give rise to locants of one and two. So this name of the molecule would be 1-ethyl-2-methyl-cyclohexane. Lastly, the example on the right. You can see that there is a ring as well as an alkyl chain. There are seven carbon atoms within the chain and only four within the ring. This would therefore be a cycloalkyl substituted alkane with the root of the name being heptane with a cyclobutyl substituent. 
there's also a methyl substituent located here on the heptane chain. Next, number the heptane molecule so that both substituents have the lowest position possible. If you number left to right, the cyclobutyl group has a position of 1 and the methyl group has a position of 4. Numbering right to left would leave the methyl group at position 4 with the cyclobutyl group at position 7. Because 1 is less than 7, the left to right numbering is preferred in this case. The name for this molecule would be 1-cyclobutyl-4-methylheptane. To wrap everything up, let's summarize what we learned in the video. IUPAC nomenclature was designed to help us distinguish between different molecules through naming. Here are some key rules to keep in mind when naming alkanes and cycloalkanes. One, find the principal chain for all molecules to determine the root of the name. For cycloalkanes, the parent may be the ring or it may be the acyclic alkyl chain. You must count the number of carbons within each to determine what is the case. Two, Identify the substituents present. It's much easier to do this if you have them memorized, although memorization will come with practice and time. Three, number the parent chain so that the substituents have the lowest possible number, otherwise known as the position or locant on the chain. Four, substituents of the same kind, such as two alkyl substituents, should be prioritized by alphabetical order. But make sure that you do not include the prefix when you're making this distinguishment. Like in the example of tert butyl, you only use the butyl to make the distinguishment of alphabetical order. I hope this video was helpful in introducing you to IUPAC nomenclature. For more fun, more alkane nomenclature practice, and other chemistry content, visit www.chemistrytalk.org. Thank you.